ISPA. It's a multinational company based in Italy, in Rome. Uh, we work pre uh, mostly with public administration, but we work with private company, uh, companies like banks or insurance companies, and we build our own product too. Today, I'm here to uh, talk about the use of a platform as a services for educational environment. Uh, we started a project, a research project, called Citta Educante. In English, it should be Educating City. Uh, the project was committed by public administration, and its main goal is to re-engineer the learning processes with the use of most innovative technologies and methodologies. The project started on September 2014. Uh, it's planned to, um, uh, its duration is planned to be more or less 36 months. We got uh, four big aims and 92 deliverables. On the project are involved several companies, public companies and private companies like Almaviva or Rai. Rai is a, a public television broadcasting services in Italy. They broadcast on uh, something like 40 or 50 television channels, but they broadcast on radio channel and on internet too. They uh, has got a huge uh, amount of videos, of educational videos, that they use to broadcast um, mostly during late night, uh, like 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. on some educational channels, television channels. So it's very difficult for people in Italy to see this type of videos. D in these videos, there are um, real university courses took by real university professors. So it's really good content, multimedia content that they have got, they have got in their data center. But this video are just raw video. They are not indexed, there are not metadata on this video, so it's very difficult to use this video on demand through internet. We got also some public institute on this project uh, that are involved in this project, like two university of north part of Italy, Modena and uh, University of Trento. Uh, we got another public institute that is really important in Italy that is called CNR. It's uh, a public institute devoted only to research and development activity. And they cooperate with private companies, but also with other um, public institutes uh, from outside Italy, like the CERN of Ginevra. We got also some small medium business, we call them ATI, and they uh, develop uh, innovative software like semantic software or artificial intelligence software. We got finally also some foundation, some private foundation like Regio Children Foundation. They are known because they produce new learning scheme and new educational methodologies and they cooperate with other schools and also association, but they work together with children too. So in direct contact with children. The main goal, uh, technical goal of the project is to create applications, so software that can host and can support these new methodologies for the learning processes. When we say learning processes, we are referring to long life learning because we strongly believe that the learning process does not stop at the school level. You continue to learning during your work experience and maybe the best part of the learning experience is during working experience because you learn things by doing. You are trained on the job. So uh, our project is focused on the long life learning that start from the age of three or four years old uh, to the age of 45, 50 years old. A requirement, a direct requirement for the public administration is that all application built inside this project or methodologies, services, everything built inside this project must be host on a cloud, full cloud platform. So we can see the overall solution architecture overview. We basically created just a cloud environment where we got some bare metals at the lower layer. Uh, we got routers, we got network elements, we got servers and storage. All this type of bare metals is um, managed by the infrastructure as a service layer uh, that is in our solution is powered by OpenStack. Then we got the platform as a service layer that uh, is entirely managed by WSO2 private pass product 
And this layer is very important because it, um, host, it will host platforms of different types. We got legacy application like Alfresco for document management. We got uh, XO, for example, for social part of the project. XO is, um, uh, for who of you does not know, is a social network application. is the same of Facebook, but written in Java. We got also some software as a services like own cloud that is a file sharing um, software just like Google uh, Drive or Dropbox. All this type of software is needed to um, provide contents or to let actors that use the platform to put new content inside this own environment. The actor can you see in the um, in the slide are several type of actors. We got school, we got citizens, we got public entities, companies, and other association. And uh, the, our biggest aim is to let all these actors to interact between each other using this platform, or just consume contents providing by the platform, or just put new content inside the platform. Content like multimedia, like um, files, videos, social contents. I would like just to make a few use case example about uh, this project. The first one is uh, Rai example. Rai, as I told you, has got a huge amount of video, but th that are raw video, not indexed video. So uh, the first application that we built together with university and CNR was a uh, semantic application that automatically analyzed video, raw video, in order to produce metadata, a short resume of the video, some text and some annotation. So what we are doing is to index all this metadata and all this information to let end user just take the and see this video on demand. This is really useful for university students, for example, that just finished their lesson of computer science course, and they want to uh, integrate what they did learn with other video coming from other professor, other university, they can easily go to this platform and just search for the content for the video that they want to, um, to see. Another use case can be, for example, what we call it certified curricula. It's basically is, is a resume. Today, uh, when you uh, apply for a new job, you create your own curricula, you create your own resume, you can write whatever you want, the company should trust you that you wrote the, uh, your real experience inside this uh, resume. Well, if we got the place where we got all information about the learning process for a single person, like students, where all the school can put all, uh, for example, exam results, which courses, which university was attended, which was the teacher or the professor of the institute that I attended, which was the social rating about this teacher or about these courses, all this type of information uh, is collected in unique environment. We can use all this information to provide, to build automatically a new resume for everyone, and companies can use these services without needing to trust the, uh, the person who is applying, because they need just to trust the system. This information is coming directly from the system. So this is just another uh, use case. We got other use case too but we can go on for now. Uh, why we choose uh, these softwares and uh, these solutions? I will start to talk about the project level drivers. Uh, we got some requirements for pu from public administration, directed from public administration, that gave us some drivers for the software selection. In fact, to uh, realize the cloud platform, we must use only open source licensed software and solutions. The, uh, the cloud uh, environment must be, and uh, all the uh, platform must be flexible enough to handle and host different type of platforms, cloud-based application, but also non-cloud-based application. It must be easily scalable, just to, uh, if some resources, more resources are needed on the system, it must be simple to add this new type of resources. It must be usable, because as I told you, we are focusing on long life learning, so um, the system must be user friendly from uh, people of small, um, of young age, and people of uh, old age, so it must be usable for both. 
uh, if we want to focus only on the platform as a service layer, we made a deep software selection by deep testing several solution, open source solution present on the market. We tested WSO2, we tested Cloudify, Cloud Foundry, and OpenShift. And basically, we choose a WSO2 private pass mainly for the following reason. It's open source, it's fully open source. Uh, it follows OSGI models, uh, and uh, it allows to extend this platform with uh, easy. Uh, it's supported by Apache community, and for us, the community that is behind the solution is very important, and Apache community is one of the biggest uh, actual on the market. Uh, it got auto-scaling feature that uh, is a feature that some other software that I mentioned before does not uh, have in their uh, open source version, as, uh, as well as the graphical user interface that is really user-friendly, uh, the one of WSO2 private pass. Uh, meanwhile, other software mentioned like Cloud Foundry doesn't even, does not even have a graphical user interface on the open source version. It's compatible with OpenStack and it uses Puppet that is a warranty of the maximum flexibility. With Puppet you can do whatever you want on your target system. Uh, finally, it, support, it got the support for .NET and IIS applications. So Microsoft-based application. Now probably some one of you is wondering why you need to support a proprietary application, a proprietary uh, solution like Microsoft if your driver is open source uh, licensed software. Well, it's uh, pretty simple because uh, our driver is to use open source license to build the cloud environment. But uh, many small business, uh, small, uh, small medium business in Italy, just like many public institutes in Italy, still uses Microsoft technology. And uh, we cannot force them to move on open source architecture so, uh, and application. So we decided to uh, allow the support for this type of uh, Microsoft application. For now, is really needed. If we want to take a look on the uh, actual architecture implementation, uh, you can find that we uh, manage the entire private pass layer and try platform as a service layer with just two servers. One server is WSO2 private pass master, and the other one is Puppet master. We decided to put all the, uh, the private pass services on just one server. Um, so uh, hopefully you know uh, the internal architecture of uh, uh, WSO2 private pass. It consists of several applications like Apache Hadoop, Apache uh, Active MQ, like WSO2 complex event processor or business activity monitor or identity service. All these type of components that are um, uh, support component for the cloud controller based on Apache Stratos. All these type of, um, of components are put together in just one server. Uh, we just put outside the uh, Puppet Master server. And for now, uh, HA is not needed because we are on early stage of the project. HA is on roadmap for sure, also for this layer. But for now, it's not needed because uh, even if those two servers goes down, all platform that we spawned with the, this, through this layer still continue to running. What we lose in the case of failure, just auto-scaling feature or the uh, capability to spawn new um, platforms. So for now, it's not a problem because it's, uh, uh, the user base of the system is really low. So we are focusing on other tasks of the project, but it's a roadmap to have HA also on a uh, platform as a service layer, just like we did already at infrastructure as a service layer. Platform requirements uh, are different. Uh, the platform that we need to host with uh, our um, system uh, can, um, can be non-cloud application. For example, the semantic application that we build to analyze video is a standard C++ application. It must not scale never because it takes, uh, a, a, it makes a large use of uh, uh, graphical processing units, GPUs, in order to uh, analyze videos. So uh, it's, uh, this, application, this application is not suitable for cloud, but it must be hosted on a full cloud environment. 
platform must be high available. Uh, means that, uh, for example, our Fresco platform that we use it must be um, hosted in HA mode in active active cluster. This is a feature that we easily get with WSO2 private pass, mainly because of the use of Elastic Load Balancer that has really interesting feature. Uh, for example, if you uh, spawn a new, uh, if you're scaling up your Fresco application server instances because uh, there is heavy load on the on the servers. Uh, you will create a new virtual machine with uh, the entire uh, application stack of Alfresco. Now, uh, when a platform as a service layer spin up this new instance, uh, Elastic Load Balancer automatically recognizes this instance and automatically configure itself in order to provide requests to this new instance. And it, this is done by uh, the topology messaging uh, topic that uh, Elastic Load Balancer subscribe and that private pass Apache Stratos uh, publish. So uh, when they spawn a new instance, they uh, publish, Stratos publish a new message on the uh, Apache MQ uh, topology topic. The, this mes message is consumed by Elastic Load Balancer that automatically configured itself to provide requests to this new uh, application server. We need to uh, support a scalable platform as well. Uh, I will uh, make you an example. Uh, in Italy, we got uh, the Department of Education that uh, has got a website, and that website is the only way that new, uh, new uh, that the students uh, has got to subscribe to the next year courses and next year schools. Well, <coughs> between <coughs> between May and July every year, this site is uh, under a heavy load and high. Uh, user concurrency. So uh, it was dimensioned to handle this heavy load, but during the rest part of the year, there is a big waste of resources because nobody nevertheless uses this uh, website. Uh, we need to uh, make it possible to automatically scale uh, upon uh, according on the, um, on the load on the system in order to don't waste these resources. Uh, finally, we need to host multi-thyroid application. Alfresco is an example. Uh, if we uh, need to manage multi-thyroid application like Alfresco, you cannot put on the same server uh, the database layer and the application service layer. Because if your server scales up because of the upcoming request, you got two copies of database that are not aligned between each other. So data inside are different. So uh, you need to uh, separate the tire you need to put database uh, layer on another cartridge and application layer on a different cartridge. In this way, uh, for this type of application that use relational database like SQL, you can also uh, prevent the database layer to don't scale because if it scale, you need to implement replication mechanism. And on cloud environment is a little bit tricky, a little bit difficult to do this. Uh, so you need to separate the, the two type of cartridge and you can, with private pass, you can um, implement some rules in order to let the database never scale, never scale up. So it's just scaled vertically, but never horizontally. And so we needed the support for multi tiered application. Uh, what we did uh, in the first stage was the cartridge definition. We needed to def define all cartridge implementation for all applications, and Puppet script also, for all applications that we need to host on our platform. Well, during this uh, process, we found three types of scenario for cartridge implementation. We found a really easy, uh, a really simple cartridge definition for cloud-enabled application. Uh, one example is Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is a um, NoSQL database. It's really simple to define Elasticsearch cartridge. There are already provided many examples on the internet you can find. But it's basically it's really simple because all you need to do is to download the Elasticsearch package, extract it, um, configure, uh, its configuration file, so modify its configuration and run it. It automatically recognizes all the other nodes on the same network and automatically join to the cluster and handle all the replicas of the information. So this was really simple um, cartridge implementation. 
Then we found a uh, medium difficult cartridge uh, implementation scenario on the multi tiered platform. As I told you, you uh, need to handle all uh, two types of cartridge this way because you need to handle database uh, cartridge and application server cartridge. And even this way is a little bit tricky for a uh, platform administrator to uh, subscribe and to uh, create new uh, multi tiered platform because they firstly need to uh, subscribe database cartridge. Then they need to wait for the provided IP address and they need to provide this IP address as an input parameter for the application server cartridge in order to let the application server to point on the database. This is a little bit tricky. So, um, WS2, unfortunately, unfortunately for now, misses this feature of a, a cartridge grouping that is uh, something like an orchestrator that can uh, spawn firstly the, with just one click, spawn firstly the cartridge database, then wait for the IP address and automatically subscribe the application server cartridge passing the IP address of the database. So for now we solved these issues uh, using, uh, uh, by using OpenStack services uh, that are present starting from Juno version. Juno and Kilo version, and they are known as Trope and Sahara, and basically are database as a service and shared file system as a service. So uh, it, the management is still tricky because you still need to uh, handle uh, this definition on infrastructure as a service layer. So you need still to require as a service a new database, uh, as a service a new shared file system. But you got the opportunity to scale them vertically with easy. So uh, we solve it for now, we solve the issues this way. We're hoping for the next releases, the implementation of cartridge grouping inside uh, Apache Stratos. Then finally we got the hard scenario of cartridge implementation that is basically uh, Microsoft cartridge implementation. Uh, Stratos, when uh, spawn up new instance of the platforms, uh, uses an application that is called Stratos Cartridge Agent. This application is basically a Java application, so it works under Linux as well under Windows. Uh, but what uh, the Stratos Cartridge Engine does upon the start is to call some shell scripts that are obviously uh, working only under Linux environment. So what we did was the porting of this shell script to batch Microsoft files in order to work under Microsoft environment and plus Puppet Client is available for Windows Platform 2. So we did the trick in this way and we successfully created Microsoft IIS cartridge that can automatically spawn up IIS platform with .NET and ASP applications. Finally, next steps. Uh, we need to f finalize software development. We need to uh, create the unique guy, unique graphical user interface that will be the unique entry point for all users. We decided to use EXO for this because mainly because of the uh, end user experience. Uh, and end user are, um, is really known that Facebook user experience is uh, fit well all uh, type of age today. So we decide to uh, do not modify this user experience and let people and user access to a Facebook-like platform, but EXO uh, let you use Java portlets. So we are going to uh, implement all the services that are going to be built in this project, like the Ray use case or the uh, certified curricula use case, uh, will be uh, included is in this Java portlet. Obviously, we need to implement single sign-on feature for these services. We don't want user type credential to log in. And finally, we need to uh, create the API infrastructure because the entire system needs to interoperate with other projects at the same level that belonging to the same big project of smart cities. And uh, for this topic, the um, yesterday events was really helpful for us. Uh, I would like to uh, finish my keynote with a uh, little speak about Docker container. We strongly believe that Docker's container will be the future of the platforms and uh, will be very used on uh, every cloud environment. We are already using Docker container on uh, infrastructure as a service layer. OpenStack supports Docker really in a good way, but we would like, we would love 
to see platform as a service feature applied to containers. We would love to see auto-scaling feature applied to containers and other platform as a service applied to containers. Uh, this is why we're waiting for the next release of Apache Stratos uh, that will be 4.1.0 that will support Docker. And uh, in the near future, we will try to support Apache community and WSO2 on uh, the Stratos development in order to uh, fully support the Docker container at private pass as a service layer and a platform as a service. <laughs>